John chapter 3, Jesus is talking to a man named Nicodemus who was, we saw last week, a religious man, a very knowledgeable man, a wealthy person, a person well respected, but a person who is longing for more. And Jesus tells him that what you're looking for is not found in any of these things. You need to be born again. You need to have an encounter with the Spirit of God to give you a different birth. You were born physically, now you need to be born spiritually. And we talked about how when you're born spiritually, it changes everything. Like all your senses are changed, right? Your eyes, you don't see the natural anymore. You have God's vision, right? Your ears, you don't just, you don't just hear with the natural self, you hear with the spiritual self, right? And you hear God's voice. God's got a plan. God's got a purpose. God speaks to his people who are born of him, right? And then we talked about the sense of your touch. Like you don't, you don't touch people the same way anymore. You touch them with compassion. You touch them with holiness because you have the touch of God on your life. Amen? Amen. And, so, and so God touches every, every part of us. And I want to drive this a little bit deeper today continue this conversation. What does it mean to be born again? And I'm going to pick up from verse 8, right? If you missed last week, go listen to the podcast. It will bless you, and you will be caught up in where we are. Uh, but I want to pick up from verse 8 as they continue to talk here. Uh, are you there? Jesus says this in, in verse 8. He says that the wind blows where he pleases. You hear his sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Right? Well, you, don't, you don't grab the wind. You don't put the wind in your pocket and say, you're my wind. Right? But you see the effects of the wind all around you. And that's what he's talking about. When you're born of the Spirit, there's something else going on that you may not see the Spirit of God, but you can feel and experience the Spirit of God in ways that if someone is not in tune with the Spirit of God, they'll look at you like you're stupid. But you know there's something more going on here than just what meets the eye. Amen? And so Nicodemus is struggling with this. He says, how can this be? Like, what do you mean? He said. And watch Jesus' response. Jesus says, you are Israel's teacher. In other words, aren't you a religious teacher? Like, don't you know everything there is to know about religion? And you don't have the answers? Kanye, you don't have the answers, way. Nicodemus, you don't have the answers. Say Jesus. Huh. And you do not understand these things? Verse 11, very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify of what we have seen. But still you people do not accept that testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? Keep talking to me about kiddie pool stuff. I'm trying to talk to you about the deep end stuff. Come on, come on, come on. You ever talk to people, and all you hear is kiddie pool? They're trying to tell you what they did this week. Yo, man, you know what? Kiddie pool, bro. You're still not kiddie pool? Like, you're trying to impress me with with how you got hammered this weekend, and who, who you picked? Like... Get off the kiddie pool, bro. You can't dive head on on the kiddie pool side. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Y'all, look how much money I'm... Oh, are you, come on, let's talk. Real talk. I'm talking like a little kid. No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. I'm going to stop there. You are a religious teacher, and you don't know these things. Like, I don't know about you, but Jesus to me is a straight-up dude. Right? I, I don't know. When some people tell me, some, they're like, I don't know if Jesus would say that or do that. I'm like, have you ever read the Bible? Like, I don't know what Jesus you conjure up in your head, you know? But, man, he like, you, you're a teacher. Like, you're meant to teach. Teacher, in another instance, he told them, you guys are blind and you're leading the blind. You ever met people, you start telling to them about Jesus, the first thing they do is give you their religious resume? Oh, yeah, I've been to church. I was an altar boy. I got catechized. I got baptized. <laughs> you know, they'll give you all their religious resume 
But then the question still stands, though, has God changed your life? I didn't ask you for your resume. I asked you for your experience. Right? Some people think they know it all already. Oh, I don't need to go to church. I've already been there. done that. It's like, no, you may know religion. It doesn't mean you know God. Isn't it fascinating that we can know religion but not know God? Isn't it fascinating you can know of, of God but not know God himself? There's a difference between knowing about God and actually knowing God. This is what Jesus is talking to a religious man about. The people that we, sometimes we say, that's what we want to be. I want to be a good person. I just want to be a religious person. I don't want to do anything wrong with anybody. Jesus is like, you could do all that and still miss it. That's crazy. Can I show you the most craziest scripture I ever read in my life? Like, I've read the entire Bible. This is the most crazy. You read, I don't know if you're ready for this. I will show you the most crazy thing that Jesus to me ever said. Can I show it to you? Watch this. In Matthew 7, he says this. He says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the ones who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. My God. I can do a lot of religious things and still miss God. If that doesn't, like, put a little fear in you, I don't know what will. Because I'm a religious teacher. It's what I do. And he's saying, I can do this and still miss God. Yeah. If I'm not born again, if I'm not born from above, if I don't have the experience of knowing him that came from above. He says, I came from there. I'm talking about things that I've seen and experienced for myself. Have you had this experience? Yeah, you've had church. Cool. Yeah, you know how to do church. Some people come in here, they know. Three songs, they do a prayer, they do a message. It op open the altar, and then we go have, you know, whatever we have. Today we have hot dogs, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and that's church. In the meantime, there are so many things going on in the spirit, but you miss it because you did church. My God. We did church, but we missed Jesus. Like, if that doesn't put a little bit of a, like, fire in you to say, man, am I missing church or am I missing Jesus? Like, I need to wrestle with this a little bit because he said, like, you won't make it just by religion alone. That's intense. Because most people think they're good because they're, they, they did some religious things. But sometimes you can do some religious things and be farther away from God than a person who has never done anything religious in their lives. You know what's fascinating to me about church? I was thinking about this this week. I would take someone right off the street who doesn't know Christianese. <laughs> you know the person? They don't talk Christianese. They don't tell you everything you want to hear. Right? I, I'd rather take a person right off the street who doesn't know anything about anything, but he's hungry and he's teachable and he wants the will of God as opposed to a person who thinks they know it. But is missing it. You're like, what is Christianese? You know, Christianese is when you say all the spiritual beautiful things. But you don't walk them out. Like yesterday, I, I don't mean to do this, but you know me. How many of y'all were like, I'll be there with you guys tomorrow in spirit? You know what that is? Christianese. In other words, you didn't show up. You didn't do jack. You didn't help out. You didn't give. You didn't serve. You didn't do anything. That's religion. Okay? As opposed to showing up, sweat a little bit, get into some things a little bit, get hungry, get dirty, and show, hey, I'm a real person in real life doing real Christianity with real people in this moment. I have nightmares about this stuff. I've had nightmares about church full of people who miss God. What's the point? To get up early and miss God. I might as well go to IHOP and get a nice breakfast. He says, just because you say the right things doesn't mean you know the right person. Because you don't know, I don't know if you understand this. He's not condemning him. He's saying, are you in tune with God? Yeah. Like Nicodemus, you're on the kiddie poolside, man. You're ready to dive. You're ready to go deeper. 
into what really matters. Because, man, Christianity is boring when it has no legs, when it doesn't swim. It's boring. When people tell me they're bored with church, I'm like, yeah, you are. Because you don't know God. I've never been bored with God, but I've been bored with religious people. I've been bored. Man, they start talking. It's like my spirit is yawning. I always get nervous when the person shows up. God bless Pastor Marco. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's like, what? (laughs) It's like, come on. That ain't it. That ain't it. That ain't it. How are you born from above? Are your eyes seeing beyond the natural? Are your ears hearing the voice of the Lord? Does your heart beat with the things that beats the heart of God? Is your hands touching what God would touch? Or are we, like yesterday, strangers. Can you touch strangers in the name of Jesus? And I feel repulsed by them. Can we touch people that Jesus would touch because we're in tune with him? Can we go beyond the people's physicality and see their spirit and see a brokenness and see a hurting and say, that's what Jesus would do. That's what Jesus would do. That's what Jesus would do. We can do religious things and miss out on Jesus. Church, please hear me. Have you had a revelation of God? Have you had a revelation of God for your life? Because, man, this life right here ain't it. Why do you think we're not happy? We're not meant to be happy with this life. Why do you think you tried a million things and you still don't feel happy? Because it's never going to click. It's never, I don't care how many relationships, this is the one, that's the one. Everybody thinks they got something coming. Everybody thinks this is the job. Everybody thinks this is the person. Everybody thinks that. And Jesus is like, you could do all that and still miss it. Are you born from above? Do you have a heaven perspective of life? Because heaven has a perspective. Heaven looks down. We look this way. Heaven looks that way. Heaven sees the beginning to the end. Has God given you a revelation for life? I don't want you to go through life just existing. I want you to go through life thriving in the spirit. To have a real life, people. That's what Jesus is trying to lead this man into. He's like, man, don't you know we're all spiritually blind? Like, we were born spiritually blind. We need an encounter with Jesus. You know, Jesus gave me a a tangible revelation of this yesterday at the park. I love how real God is. I'm walking around. Someone put me aside and says, I want to introduce you to someone. This lady, Pastor Marco, is legally blind. But you know what she's told me? Legally blind with no faith. But I walk into church, and I heard your voice, but I heard more than your voice. I heard God's voice. I heard God's voice. And now I can say I'm saved. My God, it would be better to be physically blind than spiritually blind. Because a lot of people are seeing, but they're not really seeing. So many people could see, but they're blind because they haven't truly seen. Let me show it to you. The Bible says this, what's this in, in, in Corinthians? It says, it says, the person without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, but consider them what? Foolishness. How many people have laughed at you? Oh, oh come on, you <laughs> born again. <laughs> yeah, you. <laughs> oh, you guys raise your hand. Oh, you're speaking to, oh, oh. <laughs> not knowing that your laughter, your laughter, your laughter is just insecurities. You've never seen. You've never actually seen. But here you are. You think you know. <laughs> Look at those guys. <laughs> I see some people in church that are like this. <laughs> Look at everybody. <laughs> Not knowing. You're the spiritual idiot. <laughs> but they swear they have it all figured out. They have it all figured out. But when things go bump in the night, Who do they call? 
Who are you going to call? <laughs> Foolishness, they say, and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. I tell you, right now, if you can see in the Spirit, there's a lot going on. When you begin to see in the Spirit, no Sunday is the same. So you think I do all this stuff for show, like yell, scream, shout, all that? I'm seeing it in the spirit. People need to be set free. People need to be delivered. People need to be set apart. Like there are battles going on. And if you don't see in the spirit, all you see is, yeah, that pastor likes to yell. That's all natural. That's all natural. You have no idea what I'm trying to do. If you can just get your eyes open to the reality of Spirit world. Don't you know that some people in here are on the verge of either heaven or hell? This is real stuff. I know in the natural, everybody dies, everybody goes to heaven because that's what we think. But there's a real heaven. There's a real hell. And he said it. Just because you said my name doesn't mean you know me. Are we related? Do we have a relationship? Do you know me? Church, I don't want you to go through life missing it. Because all you did was scramble for the natural and miss real life. It sounds foolish. Watch this. But Paul goes on to say this. He says this in Corinthians. He goes on. He goes, look, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. It doesn't make any sense in the natural. Why would a cross that happened 2,000 years ago have anything to do with me? If you look in the natural, it makes no sense. But in the spirit, you know, that was God's provision for you. Since the foundation of the earth, God intended to rescue you, to save you, to heal you, to restore you, to empower you. And he sent his son ahead of you. While you were still sinner, Christ died for your sins. Like God made provision even before you knew you needed provision. And when that hits home, it changes everything. You never look at a cross the same way again. Some people look at it, it's a bling. We know that's provision. Amen. That's salvation. Amen. That's healing. Amen. That's restoration. Amen. That's my identity. Yes, that's my purpose. Yes, that's my identity. Yes, that is my life. Anybody know the cross of Jesus Christ in this place? You know what the Bible says? Without vision, you perish. We have vision. Do you have a vision for your life? Not the kiddie pool side. Do you have an actual vision of the Lord? Like, has the Lord revealed to you that you have a purpose on this earth? That you, your, your job is not to just pay bills and die. Like, you have an actual purpose that goes beyond the natural. Have the Lord revealed to you that your job is not just to, what am I going to wear? What am I going to eat? Uh, what's playing on Netflix? There's so much more to your life. You need to pray at the Lord, take the blinders off so I can see a real life. Of course we're bored because we have blinders on. But it's an adventure with God. Yeah. It's, it's beyond your wildest imagination. The Bible says there's a way that seems right, but it leads to destruction. Why? Blinders. When you walk with the Lord, he'll show you things even before they happen. <laughs> Even before they happen, the Lord loves you too much to not reveal it to you. And if you're paying attention, man, he comes in so many ways. Because he's active. He's an active spirit. He's speaking to you right now if you're paying attention. Two people are in here right now. One person's getting blessed. The other person is just yawning. Why? You're missing it. You're missing it. I don't know about you, but I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss it. Lord, reveal yourself to me. I want to know you. I want to walk with you. I want to live my life in the fullness of your will. Amen. Jesus said, I have heaven's perspective. Do you have heaven's perspective? You know what that means? Are you living with eternity in mind? Do you know that every action that we take has a consequence for good or bad? What would happen if you live with this question in mind every day? How will this impact my eternity? What would happen to our everyday 
if we begin to ask the question, how is this day going to impact me for eternity? You know what C.S. Lewis said? He said, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. See, everybody talks about a hell afterwards. I think you can be, you can be in church and live in hell because you're not in tune with the Holy Spirit. Like some people, I don't know if you know this, some people, it's like everything bad happens to them over and over and over again. There's like a never, it's like, oh, this thing broke and that thing broke and this thing didn't work. It's like, man, you could be in church and miss it because you're not in tune with the Spirit of God. When you're not in tune with the Spirit of God, things will break. Yeah. And I don't just mean physically. Things will break emotionally and spiritually. Yeah. Are you living with eternity in mind? Or is your nine to five way more important? To live our entire lives but not live. Now that's hell. Now that's hell. To not fully live. To never go beyond the borders of the natural. That's sad. Like, how many of you guys were there yesterday and you felt alive? You know why we feel alive? Because we're in tune with the Spirit of God. Like we're doing something beyond, like we wouldn't do that on a natural self. It's Saturday. It's my day off. By the way, I don't have Saturdays off. I'm working to work today. <laughs> I work Saturday to work Sunday. But you get what I'm point is? Like some people are like, oh, that's Saturday. That's my day off. Yo, you keep having days off. That means a life off. That's not a day off. That's a life off. Not doing God's will. You're living off. You're living off. Right? You're living off. Like I joked about it earlier. People are like, I got to take care of my family. Anyone should do that. Like if you're not doing that, what kind of person are you? Right? So there's no brownie points for that. Right? And we don't even get, do it to get brownie points. I don't know about you, but the more I give, the more I'm receiving. Yeah. Like that's all I do it for. Yeah. The more I'm doing it, the more I'm like, man, dang, this feels good. Feels like life. This feels like life. I don't know about you, but I went home like feeling like life. Like I just did life. Right? As opposed to doing something on the week and come back and be like, oh, that was death. We don't say death, but we mean death. I'm never doing that again until we do it again. Because we don't know any better than life. We just death leading to death. He said blind leading the blind. Fascinating when I hear people. Give other people counsel on the natural. <laughs> I might like, wait, wait, time out. That's like someone married getting counsel from a single person. That makes absolutely no sense at all. Like married dudes should never get counsel from a bachelor. Like it makes no sense. How do you know what I deal with? How do you know my reality? Because that ain't your reality. How can your natural affect my spiritual if you ain't spiritual to lead me into the spirit of God? Human judgment, understand this, the Bible makes it clear. Listen, human judgment is just limited. It's just what you know. Well, here's what I've experienced. Here's what I know. That's all? That's all we're going to give me? <laughs> I need something more. I've seen your experiences. Limited. Life can be, of course life can be depressing if we live it that way. Yeah. Of course every day could be a terrible day. You ever, you ever met people at 8 o'clock in the morning, they're already having a bad day? Yeah. Like, don't raise your hand. Tomorrow morning, some of you, you're going to get up, you go, ah, Monday. <laughs> ah, another, like, you know it's going to be Monday. <laughs> like, we act like it's, like it's a surprise. Monday? What is this thing? Where did it come from? <laughs> Anybody have some counsel on Monday? And then you hear from other people that are surprised that it's Monday. <laughs> Limited. But the Bible says when you receive this experience, you receive the spirit of God. The spirit of God is the same spirit that was in Jesus. It says now that spirit begins to communicate with your spirit. And that brings life. The Bible goes as far as saying, like, the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lives in you. Now, meditate on that for a little bit. Can you imagine waking up and going, man, the same spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the dead after three days lives in me? How would your Monday be? 
The same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lives in me, and I have the situation. How would this situation be resolved? The same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lives in me, and someone's hating on me. How do you think you're going to go down? Can you imagine we begin to live life with eternity in mind? The same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lives in me. Then why am I trying to work 100 hours a week? Who's ruling my life? Is it money or is it Jesus? Well, the bills won't pay themselves. Yeah. So you're on. It's either you're on or God's on. But we do go to church. But miss out on the spirit of God. Because we won't let him. You won't give him any room to do anything. When I have it all figured out. Watch this. Where the Bible goes on to say in Corinthians 2. It says this. These are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things. Even the deep, deep things of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them. In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. What we have received is not the spirit of the world but the spirit who is from God so that we may understand what God has freely given us. Wow. How many people walk every day confidently that they're walking with the spirit of God? Because there's a difference between saying, oh, I know there's a God, and saying, I walk with God. Like, I walk with God. In whatever. Life brings, I walk with God. I have that confidence that he is with me. Amen. And the Bible says that if he's with you, then who can be against you? What do you see? What do you see? Because without vision, we perish. What are you seeing? If you're not seeing, please demand a revelation. What do you see? In other words, why are you here? I can't believe that he went to the cross for us to just exist. I just can't accept that. I can't accept that there's an empty tomb, but my life is empty. I can't accept this reality that if he's real, if he's really real, I need you to open my eyes to see who I am in you. You said you're good and you love me, then I need to know on the day-to-day -day basis that you are really with me and that you walk with me and that you talk to me and I listen and you reveal things to me and I have power in what I say and my heart is full of life. My God. I want real life. I don't want religion. That's boring to me. I don't want to have a religion that I was a good person but didn't do anything good. I don't want a religion that is just about me, myself, and I. I don't want a religion that doesn't see breakthrough. I don't want a religion that doesn't sacrifice, that doesn't actually come alive. Church, when was the last time you came alive? I don't need extra things to come alive. If I have to get hammered to, get, to come alive, that ain't life. I want to come alive because there's a real God who lives in me. When the Spirit of God hits you, it's not about you anymore. Next week, I'm going to talk about purpose. Please, pick up this book, Purpose Driven Life. Why? What on earth am I here for? You know, the first sentence in the book is, it's not about you. When you get that revelation, your life will go to a whole nother level. It's amazing to me, the more we make life about us, the more miserable we're becoming. We accumulate more, but we don't have more. Born again will shift life for you. It's not about you anymore. Stop seeing things just in the natural because you're just passing through. Yeah. Don't you understand the Bible says your life here is nothing but a vapor? If it is, then what the heck? <laughs> Shouldn't I be living it to the fullest? Yeah. Nothing but a vapor? I 
want to live in the fullness of God's will for me. Amen. When the Spirit of God hits home, it brings a revelation of why you're here. There is a revelation. I used to say, when we used to come up, when we were in college, we, we met in college, we used to drive up here to New Bedford. She's from New Bedford. I'm not. We used to drive up here to visit my in-laws. And for some odd reason, I used to say, man, I can never live in New Bedford. <laughs> you know what they say, right? If you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. <laughs> tell him your plans. So I didn't plan for this. But when you live in tune with the Spirit of God, yeah. it goes against the grain. Because everything pointed to the fact that you shouldn't go to New Bedford. All the quote-unquote natural statistics. Every other day, someone on Facebook says, I can't wait to leave New Bedford. Because all they see is the natural. That's all they see. Time Magazine says, that is the worst place to plant a church. God says, that's where I want you to go. That's exactly where I want you to go. And nothing makes you come more alive when you're doing God's will. Is it scary? Absolutely. But is it fun? Absolutely. Is it exciting? Absolutely. Oh, man, would I trade it for anything else in the world? I would not. My life would be boring if I was doing my thing. I know for a fact I'd be bored. I'm already like a pretty low-key dude when I'm not up here. My life would be boring if I'm not hearing from God. Are you hearing from God? Because God would tell you to do some things that sound crazy in the natural, but it's going to bless you in the spirit. Like that's the God that we serve. Because people can't see beyond that, right? In this two and a half years, you know how many people came and didn't stay? Because all they saw was, oh, man, that's it. That's it. But the Bible says, don't despise the day of small beginnings. Yeah. Right? There was a time where up to here where Wally was, this was the church right here. This was it. Yeah. I would try not to look to the sides, not to get the press. <laughs> Talk about blinders. I'm like this. But the Bible says, don't despise the day of small beginnings. If God called you, he's going to equip you. He's going to qualify you. He's going to bless you. I bet there's a business in you, some of you. But you're afraid to launch. Don't launch it in the natural. Launch it in the spirit. But launch it with a purpose in mind that I'm going to employ people that God's going to bless these people and their families. When you put that in perspective, watch God open up the doors of heaven and say, oh, you want to do it for the right reasons, the right way? I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you because you're going to bless families and you're going to bless the city. Every time I drive by a place that's closed in the city, I pray that a new business will launch. Why? Because I know it comes with blessings. I don't go, oh, my God, look, another thing in New Bedford. I can't wait to get out of here. Because anyone could do that. Like, isn't it funny? We have people who have PhDs in obvious. <laughs> they love telling you the obvious. I'm a pastor. Everybody's trying to tell me what's wrong with the church. Like, tell me what I don't know. Because I'm trying to work on it. Yeah, come on. Right? A person in the spirit would say, Pastor, what do we need to do? to make things better because I'm with you. I'm here to make a difference. I'm not here to suck life out of you. I'm here to give life with you because that's what people in tune with the Spirit of God will do. They don't go to a church asking what they can get. They go to a church asking, what can I give so I can bless and be a blessing where God has sent me. That's when you know you're in tune with the Spirit. So blessed yesterday to look around and see our teams at work. Nothing blesses me more. I'm meeting people that I don't even know they come to church. I absolutely love that because we pray from the beginning. I want to be part of a church that I don't know everybody's name because that's too small for me. I want to be able to walk, which happens all the time now. I was at Walmart, me and Aaron were at Walmart, and the lady goes, how was church today? I was like, wait, that's weird. He just... I was like, what do you mean? She goes, I go to your church. I was like, oh, my bad. That's what we want, that the kingdom is expanding. 
But how does it happen? It's because you are in tune with the Spirit of God all week and you're telling others this is where you find life. This is what to come to find healing, to find restoration, to find blessings, to find the will of God. You want to come alive? Then come to church with me. Come find Jesus with me. Come find life with me. Come find purpose with me because there is a God and He's so good and He's a good, good Father. It's who He is and He loves you for who you are but He's not through with you yet he wants to bless you and he wants to empower you and he wants to transform you do I have anybody in this house who loves Jesus now that's church that's church it goes beyond the four walls don't you know where you are? If you're in tune with the Spirit of God, you have a purpose to be there. Oh, it's Monday. <laughs> yes. And Monday comes with a purpose. It's Tuesday and it has purpose. It's Wednesday, there's purpose. It's difficult, but man, we learn our best lessons through pain. When you're in tune with the Spirit of God, God doesn't waste your pain. God will use your pain. That's why I was joking about the AC. I said it was God that did it. Why? Because God loves challenges. You thrive when you're being challenged. That's why some people's life is boring. They never challenge. They do everything that's easy. What's the most easiest way that I can do this possible? It's like, yeah, go ahead. That's the road that leads away from God. You said straight and narrow is the road to salvation. Why is the road to destruction? Anyone could do that. Are you following? You want to be alive. Have a real life. Right? I, you know, one of the mistakes I've heard people talk about is like, you go to church and then they go, yeah, now i got to go to the real world. It's like, what? You want to go into the real world without a real God? What do you mean? What do you mean? You don't take God to work with you? Are you out of your mind? I don't want to take 30 seconds off. Like, I don't want everybody to be in charge of my marriage. I don't want to be in charge of raising my kids. I don't want to be in charge of leading this thing. I want the Holy Spirit to lead me. What are you out of your mind? I want God in everything. Let me end with this, right? Two things happen, and I will pick this up next week with purpose, right? Two things happen when you receive the born-again experience. Two things, redemption and mission. That's what God's trying to do with everybody. Redemption is what God does for you. We talked about that already. That God sent Jesus as the provision for your redemption. What's the word redemption? To be purchased. Your salvation costs something. It costs Jesus' his life. That's redemption. He purchased you. But that was half of the mission. I got to bring you into the family. But now the mission is, it's the family business, yeah. right? What God, what God does through you, that's the mission. Is God using you? Because if he's not using you, he hasn't fully redeemed you. And if he has redeemed you, you want to be used by him. Like, when you belong to God, your time belongs to God. Your money belongs to God. Your family belongs to God. It's not like optional, <laughs> People are like, yeah, if I have time. Have you noticed we never use the word volunteers in this church? We don't believe in that. Yeah. We believe in ministers, yeah. every single person. Yeah. I respect every person that puts their hands to the plow. Why? Because they're part of the mission. Exactly. These people in the back, mission. Yeah. Kids, mission. Yeah. We don't babysit them. We teach them the ways of Jesus. Yeah. Everybody yeah. is meant to be part of the mission. Yeah. Everybody is what God does through you. Every morning, people are here on mission, setting everything up. And I salute them because I understand you've been redeemed. Now you have a mission. Do you know your mission? You know, God's, God's will is not difficult at all. At all. God's will is if, if he has redeemed you, then you're just, you're, just, you're just paying attention. What's in front of me? What can I do? Right in front of me. Everybody's waiting for a divine revelation. Behold, 
Go sign up for ministry team. Right? That's the other Christianese. I'm praying about it. That's, a, that's the Christian way of saying no. When Jesus told the story of the Good Samaritan, we all know the story of the Good Samaritan, but we missed the point. They asked him, what is the greatest commandment, teacher? He says, love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. They're like, who is my neighbor? Jesus is like, let me tell you a story. A man got robbed. And they jumped him. He's on the side of the road, dying. Three people who were called to ministry looked at him, prayed about it, and went the other way. Go look, read it for yourself. Three people, three religious people. And he, why do I need to use the Samaritan? Because the religious people consider the Samaritans to be less than them. Jesus said, then a Samaritan who would have no business doing God's will picks up the man, takes him to an inn, pays for the man to be taken care of. He says, that's your will. That's God's will, that you help people. What's the point of being religious if God's not going to work through me? God's got a job to do, and guess what? He's going to do it through you. When an announcement is made, we don't go, ah, someone will do it. If the city is in trouble, who is going to help it? Jesus said, pray. The harvest is plenty. In other words, there's plenty of people to be reached. But the workers, though, are few. And we're like, yeah, let's pray for workers. God's like, yeah, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you. I don't think he went to great distance to, to, to go to the cross, to come to an empty tomb, to give you life, and then say, my will for you is to go to a building and sit there. I don't think that's God's will. I can get, like, I don't know everything about God, but I know for a fact that that ain't Christianity. Come to a building and sit. That's religion, but it ain't the real thing. The real thing is I'm redeemed. Now I have a mission. My mission is to bring as many people to this God as possible and do it in a tangible way with my hands, with my eyes, with my feet. Like, my faith has legs. <laughs> Faith is legs. You don't put on a block party without having to work out a little bit. The Bible says work out your salvation. Right? Can you imagine going to the gym and sit? You got a gym membership. You show up every day. But you're like, I'm just taking it in. <laughs> Yo, it's leg day. Uh, I'm going to pray about it. If we don't do that at the gym, what makes us think this is church? What makes us think? You know what church to me is? It's the locker room before the game. That's what it is. The church is here to get the playbook and then go execute it. That's the church. You're in locker room right now. Right? You're in locker room right now. And then I look at the starting lineup. God's like, everybody. But you don't even have to be like, yo, did, am I starting today? He's like, everybody. How do I know this? For God so loved the world. World. Like everybody. Everybody. He didn't say some. Uh, uh, no. No. Keep reading. For God so loved the world, Nicodemus, that he sent his only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. How do I know I have life? Because I'm living on mission. That's the real deal. Anything less than that, it's religion. It's kiddie pool. It's not the real thing. It's not the real thing. If I'm not active with my hands and my feet, if I'm not doing the will of God, right? I told you, I don't want to build a church where we just do church, but we're not church. Okay? I will, listen, I will go to the grave preaching this message. I will go to the grave preaching this message because it's the only one I know. It's the only one that was preached in the Bible. It's the only one that I know. When you are born again, God has a job to do. He's going to do it through you. Through you. Not your neighbor. 
through you. Your neighbor has a role, but you have a role too. Every single person. I don't have any gifts. Don't, don't worry. That's his job. Your job is to be available. Your job is to say, Lord, here I am. Send me. And watch what he can do. Because he, he actually, he works better when you don't think you can do it. That's when he does it better. When you were born again, you crave to know God and his will. That's the real deal, church. Like, I don't know what your plans are. Like, I already saw some people leaving because, you know, they have other things more important. But I'm like, what else is there? Like, what are you in a hurry to go to? Like, what are we in a hurry to go to? Go, go worship the patriots? Oh, almighty patriots. I hope you make me happy today. You better win. I'm going to be depressed today if I don't win. Oh, my God. My life is ruined. Go listen to radio tomorrow. You'll see what I'm talking about. If New England loses today, oh, my God. The world is over tomorrow for some people on the radio. I love the Patriots, but I don't worship the Patriots. I don't worship it. Jesus is my Savior. I enjoy the Patriots, but I'm not in a rush to get out of here because I know I'm in the vein of his will. I'm already in it. I'm already in it. I'm already doing God's will. Ain't nothing coming. You already did. You already did. Every Sunday, I see people in a rush to go nowhere. Like, we put up something on Facebook yesterday about church. First question someone asks is, when does he end? I don't answer. Because I'd rather you stay home. Stay home. You don't get it yet. Come back when you're ready. Come back to go deeper when you're not ready, when you're not looking about the time. Because if he doesn't have your time, he doesn't have your heart. If he doesn't have your heart, you haven't been redeemed. If you haven't been redeemed, you have no mission. Real encounter with the real God. You must. He said, he didn't even make it an option. He said, you must be born again. Like, Nicodemus, it would be nice if you were born again. Some people think, church, I just need a little bit of adjustment, then my life will be better. No, you need a whole lot of Jesus, then your life will be better. Forget adjustment. I'm already a good person. I already got my, no, I just need a little bit of adjustment, then I'll be better. No, you need to die to yourself so Jesus can really live, then you'll really live in Jesus. Your life has meaning and purpose, but it starts by understanding it's not about you. It's about God and his will and his purpose for your life. Would you stand with me?